Welcome to Story Studio, uh, a program that's put on by the Parkland Chamber of Commerce in Treaty 2, and where we look at finding out the why Parkland. For about 30 minutes, we'll highlight some success stories, as well as look at into the work that is happening in the region uh, that makes it so amazing out here. So uh, this is all being recorded thanks to the team at Grow Media. So thanks to those guys. I'm Steve Chicota. I'm the executive director for the Parkland Chamber of Commerce, and I'm joined here by Melanie and Barrett. Thank you so much for being here with me today. Thank you. Yeah, yeah thanks really for having appreciate us. it. Uh, Melanie, do you want to kick things off? Do you want to let everybody know a little bit about yourself, who you are, what you do? Sure. So yeah, I'm Melanie McCarthy. Um, I am co-owner of North Mountain Adventures with my husband, Craig, and we are out in the Ochre River area. Um, so not too far from, from Dauphin, tucked up against the Ochre River. And uh, we have we have lots going on. We're kind of a multifaceted um, business. So we started out as an outfitting business offering um, hunting, fishing experiences for Americans. And that has since progressed and kind of come into lots of different things. So we also have four season cabin uh, rentals and the latest would be a TV series on wild TV that features different hunt, different hunting and fishing uh, experiences. So that's kind of the bulk of what we do. Yeah, and, and yourself, Barrett? Uh, I'm Barrett Precision. Uh, I'm currently a pharmacist and part owner of Dauphin Clinic Pharmacy. So a community pharmacy here in Dauphin. Um, born and raised Parkland guy, born in uh, Winnipeg Osis and uh, now have a family here in Dauphin and uh, absolutely love the Parkland life and, um, uh, you know, blessed to, to own a business in it and uh, work every day and enjoy it with family. So, um, yeah, yeah, um, I guess a little bit of uh, history on me. I, you know, I grew up in the, in the hunting and fishing business with my dad. He owned a, a hunting lodge and still owns a hunting lodge in Winnipegosis. And that was his uh, side hustle, actually. <laughs> so and then kind of created that into his uh, main business. So I got to see the small business side. And, and, and that's what I think I liked about community pharmacy. So I've been doing that for over 10 years now. And uh, time flies when you're having fun. So. Yeah, no doubt. Um, so like on the, on the lodge side, that's still active, right? Do you have any yeah, yeah, part my, in that kind of thing? Uh, like? Yeah, I still, still a little bit involved, you know, uh, you know, uh, a day job and, uh, kids and, and a <laughs> wife get in, get in the way a little bit, but I, I love the hunting and fishing. You know, I grew up with that. That's, it's in my blood. So, um, still do a bit of that, but yeah, we've got a nice lodge in, in Winnipeg Osis and, uh, tourism's great in the parkland and, yeah. and Melanie, Melanie can attest to that. So. Yeah. yeah. So, and, and with yours, Melanie, yeah, you've seen. Um, a lot of people locally taking advantage of, of your, you know, like your lodges or, or your, your guiding or anything, or is it like a lot of, uh, you know, outside the region? Yeah, good, good question. So from the outfitting standpoint, um, we are probably 98% American, um, but we definitely do um, do some Canadian stuff. We just, it's a little bit different, right? We, when you have your resources in your own backyard, you're a little less likely to go through an outfitter for that. So from that standpoint, it's mostly American, uh, but our cabin rentals has been an interesting transition. That started very much as um, folks not from the parkland, uh, but we've seen more and more people from even right from Dauphin using uh, renting the facilities since time has gone on, which has been super fun. Uh, just depends on what people are looking for, whether it's a one night stay, just kind of getaway, um, some girls nights that have happened, some couple, a couple bachelor parties that nice. we were able to keep, you know, nice and toned down that are local. So yeah, it's been fun seeing a variety of people out. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. So it just, it doesn't have to be the hunting lodge or anybody traveling in like anybody yeah. staying around you on that for sure yeah. yeah and and same with you guys probably too like over the years you've seen your yeah for sure fair um, share you know of, mostly yeah. americans but lots of local people um wanting to enjoy enjoy the parkland area you know uh, as a kid i heard stories about how great of an area we live in and how untapped our mm -hmm. our resources are our lakes and you know, our mountains and uh and you know how lucky we are and and you know even i see it as we get employees from my business moving in here, you know, they, you've got the Northgate trail system and the hunting and the fishing and mm -hmm. some people live for that. And, uh, you know, that's a selling point for us. And I think it's, uh, an area where we can, uh, take advantage of a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Definitely agree. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Cool. Uh, managing employees sort of thing. Like you've got, there, there's groups, you've, you're coming from two different, like um, multiple mm -hmm. angles on, on, you know, different businesses sort mm -hmm. of thing. They're like, um, the, the, the supports there and everyone's like, 
you know you're you're finding enough employees and everything coming. To I, that. It's like, it's challenging for sure, especially you know uh, finding a pharmacist um, can be can be a little bit of a struggle because they have to have that degree, obviously. Um, mm-hmm. And sometimes it it takes a a bit of effort to get someone out of the perimeter. Um, <laughs> you know that's that's always the challenge. But I think when people get here, they realize wow, there there is everything here. You know you've. When you've got a town the size of Dauphin, there's there's everything you really need. We're still close to Winnipeg. Um, housing is cheap. Um, so I think you just have to find someone that's willing to give it a chance. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, my, my wife was one of those people. You know, she was coming to Dauphin for one year, and uh, she discovered something as simple as uh, Vermilion Park and just not having traffic jams, you know. She could walk to work. And and who in Winnipeg can say they, they walk to work every day? So... Uh, you know, we've been in Dauphin ever since. So I, I think uh, once people realize what Dauphin and the Parkland has to offer, it's a no brainer. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. So like establishing roots like is is pretty simple of a task to be done out here. Like if someone's really willing to put in some of that effort, give it a try kind of thing. Like, yeah. 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 I think it's a, it, there's lots of resources. And I think the cool thing is, is the Parkland, I feel, attracts or can attract a, a, a neat group of people. And you don't have to be you know, from the country or from that, that sort of lifestyle to enjoy it or learn to enjoy it. And there's people all the time that are willing to share that with people and take you out to the lake and try fishing for the first time. Or, you know, I was just at uh, Hair Maiden not long ago and she was talking about having some friends out and taking them for the first time on a snowmobile and, and fishing for the first time and those sorts of experiences. So it's a great place to live. It's a great place to be. And there's lots of people who um, have that lifestyle that would love to share it with others. So kind of, Kind of touched on it a little bit, but like uh, collaborations with other local providers or other businesses or anything out there. Like, uh, where is your relationships with some other uh, groups that are out here? We just, I just had this conversation with some other female business owners last night, actually. So one thing I've been had on my mind for a while is having um, some retail uh, things that people can purchase retail when our American clients come up. So we're in a unique season in the sense that typically Clear Lake is not up and running um, in our spring bear hunt season um, or for part of it. And so when guys are asking, you know, what can I take home for my wife or my kids or what can I buy? It's It's been tricky to have something that was accessible within a reasonable distance. And so got chatting with some of the girls last night and said, hey, you know, there's a real cool spa- uh, space in St. Rose, Rodden's Keepsakes, they'd be a great place to, ho- to hold. Um, a lot of the neat retail um, products that we have in the parkland. There's so many amazing makers. Um, And so everyone's kind of collaborating on what kind of things can we make that are unique to the parkland that someone from out of country in particular would really like to purchase and take home. Um, And so collaborating collaborating with other businesses, I think, is huge. I think it's phenomenal to, phenomenal to see so many people work together. Um, and I think Barrett's a great example. You see Barrett's name out there lots and collaborating in the community and connecting with other businesses. And I do think it's the bread and butter of what keeps the business community alive is is not competition as so much as collaboration and taking nice. advantage yeah. of that. Yeah, well put. We're, we're really fortunate because um, we're in an ind- independent pharmacy. So we can do a lot on our own and make our own decisions and we're not part of a big corporation. So right. we can get other small businesses involved. And, you know, if we want to bring a product into our store, a book that somebody wrote or we can bring that into our store and sell that, you know, we can support the community organi- organizations that we want to. Mm-hmm. So if if um, it's someone's uh, sports team or, or someone's event, you know, we can donate a prize to that and get involved that way. And it, I, I think it just makes life a, a lot more rewarding, and uh, it's 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 been a lot of fun. Yeah, mm-hmm. and that, that seems to be, uh, or it has been for quite some time, like that that stance that Dolphin Clinic Pharmacy has taken as being involved yeah, a lot heavily. So for sure, you know, from the day one that I started, you know, Miles Haverlick owned the pharmacy, and he took he took a lot of pride in that, and he instilled that in in um, in myself and and uh, you know his his daughters who I'm now partners with and. It's 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 been like a family and and a, and it and it's grown as a family and and uh, supporting the community along the way is great and I think um, you know it just helps other businesses and and uh, other organizations succeed when everybody's doing things locally. Yeah, step back a little bit, like personal lives. Like, what what are some things that you guys are kind of big involved in? What's what's happening behind the scenes for for either one of you? Whoever wants to take it first. Oh boy. Um. Yeah. All right. Um, 
So I'd say uh, probably one of the first things that come to mind, ironically, is not necessarily related to the business, but I um, in super enjoy it. Uh, so once a week, I usually volunteer at the bridge in Oak River. So it's actually an after school youth program. Uh, and I have a, a, a massive heart for youth. I think that youth right now are needing a lot of love and attention and, and maybe a, a redirection in the way things are going. Um, so that's a big thing that I spend some time with. Um, Bear and I were chatting before too. I'm also on the executive for the Manitoba Lodges and Outfitters Association or MLOA as you'll probably most likely hear it. Um, so that's that's a big one. Um, I enjoy it. I've been getting more and more involved um, on from that perspective. So just really trying to be a positive voice and advocate within our hunting and fishing industry and, and lodges alike. So that's something. And then, and then also on our parent council for our school, which is lots of fun and always helping run different events and keeping my head on straight with all the kids running around and all the things that are going on there. So those are a few of the big things on the side outside of the business world. I'm busy with kids right now. <laughs> yeah. busy, busy Bear's got life, three. He's yeah. done. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I was a first-time soccer coach this year. That was a oh, blast. Nice, yeah. I, was, nice. I was scared. I didn't want to do it. And uh, But that's and, why, to do it, right? Yeah, if you're exactly. scared, push yourself, go through it. Yeah, yeah. It was it was a great experience. And I learned a lot about soccer. I learned a little bit more about kids and uh, <laughs> yeah. maybe a little bit about myself as well. But, uh, yeah. uh, no, it was a, a great experience. And, uh Still, you know, enjoy curling and hope to get my kids into that. My kids are Ukrainian dancing now, but, you know, everything's a five minute drive away. Everything's fairly easy in that regard. So we can keep our kids really involved with a wide variety of things. And if if I want to take my kids skidooing this weekend, I can. If I want to take them, uh, you know, uh, traveling the next weekend, that's fine. If if it's sports the next weekend, that's there, too. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's there's really a lot of opportunity for my kids I'm finding and, and keeping up with that is sometimes a challenge but <laughs> yeah. um, family life is really great out here and uh, and I think I think that touches on you know I think things that we can take more advantage of in the park lines keeping our youth here I'd love for, for my kids to be able to stay and uh, you know find work here and find opportunities and there is lots of opportunities here but uh, um, I think we just need to take advantage of that a little bit more yeah um, we'll put a pin in that because I want to yeah. like find out more from both of you what those opportunities can be but um hyper local there's lots obviously to do in like everybody's community and stuff but like for you instance like you're 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 working and and living in dauphin but you've also got you know those those roots back in winnipeg osis and mm -hmm, you're sure. and you're covering um a broad part of the region where you're looking after some community groups that are still in winnipeg osis as well yeah for sure right? and, so. and we've got a smaller store there as well so um, Winnipeg Osa still lane means a lot to me. I think it'll always be home and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, there's, you know, still a lot of good things going on in that community with the tourism. It's got a great beach, um, for anybody that's never mm -hmm. been there, you know, they've, they've upgraded the golf course a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, but again, a really tight knit community with a lot of community events and fun stuff going on. And, uh, you know, now having a business, we still get to support that. And, uh, I still volunteer on a, on a organization that has, um, uh, summer event or you know Mossy River days it brings in about you know twice as many people as normally in town <laughs> you know? nice. so yeah. we doubled nice. the population uh the community that weekend and have some great concerts and you know we had Charlie Major out there last summer yeah. so uh it's it's still a lot of fun and that's still home for me for sure yeah right cool. cool yeah okay so let's go back to those opportunities let's let's yeah. figure that out um uh oh, Melanie we'll, we'll start with you oh again boy. but like what's what's spot. going what are from your perspective like um, you know, either personal or through business or, or what's, what's really working? What's, what are some opportunities that are being taken advantage of, or, or maybe some opportunities that aren't quite being taken advantage of, however, however you want to kind of interpret it. That. Hmm. Um, are we speaking specific to kids here? We're talking or just outside of that, like, anything Yeah, wh wherever you want to go with it. Like, yeah. Okay. Well, one thing that's on my, that was on my mind, um, as far as opportunities, not taken advantage of. Um, I think that there's a, or maybe this is my advocacy blood that wants to, to roll with this, but um, Riding Mountain National Park traditionally or historically had been a really great space for the equestrian trails, so horseback riding. Okay. And um, I would love to see that re ignited in a sense and I, I see that as kind of an untapped resource in the ecotourism industry um, from the outdoor perspective so 
uh, for anyone in that industry who's maybe been to Banff um, or any of the national parks out west, people will travel across the western provinces to head there and and horseback ride and be up in the in the park. And we have an absolutely phenomenal resource in our backyard with the trails already there. Um, and we've done a phenomenal job in our area of tapping into that from a biking standpoint and hiking. As Barrett mentioned, Northgate Trails has done phenomenal. Um, and so that's one area that I feel um, is a bit untapped, um, both from an economic spinoff, uh, whether that's, you know, on on guided user tours. And that's something, of course, that, you know, ourselves, selfishly, we could be offering that. Um, but just from people coming to the area, that that's a, a I really feel a, an area that could be developed from an economic standpoint is bringing people into the area and seeing that attraction. Um, so that's just that's just an area that I feel could probably de- be developed in a sense and uh, just take some advocacy and volunteer work and time to, to get that back off the ground. Yeah. But that's just something that popped into my cool. mind. That's good to know. Um, never like from like my personal kind of thought process, but like for the um, there is some work being done, um, some collaboration with with groups out here and with mm-hmm. Browning Mountain National Park. So um, mm-hmm. but never, never clicked in with like the, the horseback riding element to it so that that could be another avenue that you just uh, uh, for more collaboration so for sure yeah appreciate you bringing that yeah, up so it's kind of a random thought in here that's yeah. great yeah um bear it off to you like opportunities what do you what do you see I, I, I think just opportunities to keep people here is a big thing i mean obviously with more people our business does better it's stronger mm-hmm. um and if we can our goal is to always be able to provide better care for people that are living in the parkland and and you know so more seniors housing um, would be great, especially in some of these small towns yeah. so that when you turn, um, you know, 65, 70 and you're looking at getting out of your big house with your big yard, you have somewhere to go to. And, you know, mm-hmm. Dauphin's done a pretty good job of that. I think maybe the smaller surrounding communities can do a better job of it. Um, and then just expanding on the health care that's available because there is that fear out there that what if I don't have the right care um, or have access to that care? So. I think if, sure. if we can expand on that a little bit more and then and then, you know, keep the, the outside activities, the cool activities like horseback riding. I mean, that's a great idea because um, because there is so much around, you know, we've got a ski hill on a, an hour and a half away, mm-hmm. uh, which which is great. Um, so, yeah, we are kind of like a mini bamf. We've got a national park close by and it's just keep keep expanding on that and, and while taking care of our resources as well. But yeah. Yeah. Um, there, there is a lot of opportunity. I think just, just keeping, keeping people here in those community numbers strong is, is going to maybe be, a, maybe be a bit of a challenge going forward. Um, but, uh, but I think we'll, we'll work that out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, excellent. Um, anything major happening? Any big advancements that are going on in, in your worlds in your businesses that, uh, you know, solving some problems for some people? Well, I was thinking, you know, one thing is we, we survived COVID. You know, everybody thought the world <laughs> yeah. was going to end, you know, and I'm sure that that Melanie and her husband had that. Like, there was probably some mornings where it was like, am I going to have this tomorrow, have this business tomorrow? Because mm-hmm. what if we never get an American again? And they, they found some pretty cool ways to get around things. And mm-hmm. I can remember, you know, my wife wasn't working. Her clinic was closed for a bit and we didn't know what was going to happen. And we found ways to diversify a little bit and all new opportunities came about and um, the world got a bit smaller. So I, I, I think we can keep, maybe keep building on that is that we survived and uh, yeah. that, that everything's going to be okay. And then maybe some new opportunities came about and we just got to keep building on that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I like that perspective because everyone in some regard had to adapt Yeah. in some way. Right. And, and you're seeing a lot of, yeah, some things that have happened and, and things look, for the better, you know, with, with some businesses that can yeah, yeah. Up we're, stronger. Yeah, we're taking advantage of technology maybe a little bit yeah. better right now. You know, um, people are ordering online and, you know, making things easier so they can they can still take advantage of, of the internet and, and making things easier, but they're still dealing locally. And I think mm-hmm. that's right. a big thing. You know, even yeah. other businesses like Prairie Supply and yeah uh you know kind of stand out to me and 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 you i i follow you guys you guys got creative you know you're using tv you're using internet you're using social media it was a definitely a process i like how you said just like the big thing is we all survived Mm -hmm. i shouldn't say we all survived unfortunately it has been it has taken its toll on on many businesses and and we were definitely no different i mean like i said we were 95 percent american clientele so so that 
that moment where it shut down was was heart wrenching. You know, it was kind of that shock feeling of sitting there for a while going, you know, poor me, what are we going to do? But it, it didn't take long. Whereas like, you know, that's just not in our nature. It's not in our blood to sit back and 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 take it like that. So, yeah, we did get creative. That's where things flipped and, and we became a four season rent uh, rental as opposed to it just being our you know, cabins for the hunters in an off season. And, and that's when the dream came alive for starting to film our hunts and fishing experiences. That was just always a backseat thing. So the, the quietness of the, the world shutting down allowed us the space and the time to kind of pursue those things. Um, but yeah, other big things, um, I think is just one of the key things I'm, we're still playing with is, is how to take the opportunities to bring youth into experiencing the outdoor adventures that we get to do on a day-to-day basis. It's, it's something I feel is it's, it's not um, accessible to a lot of kids that are, you know, would love to go and do those things. And, and so how do we do that in a safe manner? That's, you know, we're not carrying millions of dollars of liability on our shoulders to, to have, you know, kids sitting up in a bear stand and things like that. But so that's something we're working with. Um, And then always, building projects on site. So trying to enhance our guest experience. Um, big, some of the big things on the, the docket right now is a big picnic shelter, um, some different kids activities right on site. So in a big enhanced playground. Um, so just, you know, while you're there, making sure that the experience is, is as best as it can be. And so there's always something, you know, if I think Barrett would agree, if you're an entrepreneur, um, or a business owner of any kind, the wheels really never stop. There's always the dreams and the visions of what can be next. And so that's just the life of an entrepreneur. Yeah. I think a big thing we have going on right now is affordability here. As ah. inflation is taking over, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of people are concerned about that. You can come here and, and afford a house, you know, with a backyard, um, which a lot of people think is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yet you can stay connected to the world. We have great internet. We, you know, we're close fairly close to a major city and, and, you know, Winnipeg and Brandon and, um, you know, we're not that far out of the way. So there, there is a lot of opportunity, I think with, with affordability and there's some pretty decent wages and good jobs in this community and in the surrounding community. So, and it's also very affordable to travel here, you know, um, where a lot of places are overcrowded, overbooked, Mm -hmm. we can still welcome people into this community and, and for a, for a pretty good price. So, um, I, you know, I think if we take advantage of that and, and can get that out to the world, we'll have more, more maybe professionals coming in, which yeah. helps my side, more people wanting to come visit, which, which helps Melanie and her husband's business. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And it, as he was saying that, I was just thinking of so many of the surrounding communities that also have some phenomenal things going on. And I just at the recent Parkland Chamber Awards, seeing the number of businesses that were nominated from all over the parkland. Yeah, I think it yeah, was probably yeah. the most I've seen. Oh, Winnipeg Osos was up there. Oka River, St. Rose, right. Dauphin, uh, Grandview. Like it was just such a cool thing to see so many amazing businesses and many that are pretty new that have come around and, and many that have been around for a long time. But I do think the business opportunities are there and they're thriving if you can kind of tap into them. Yeah. Yeah. And it's good. Um, I, you know, I like the parkland word behind me here because I think that's been big. Um, for your organization, <laughs> Stephen, because um, uh, it, can, it can't just be Dauphin and <laughs> Dauphin versus St. Rose or yeah. St. Rose and Winnipegosa separate now. It's we're at a time or, or a crossroads where we've all kind of got to work together and and advertise together. So uh, that's, that's great. And and seeing these local businesses from from other communities get some recognition was was yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I really appreciate that you brought that up. Like the award show, it's. Um, it's it's an amazing platform that we get to put on that yeah we try to you know put the call out we we obviously don't discriminate on who's um who's from where across the region and and uh want to you know showcase as much as possible because there are some amazing groups out there and and uh, sorry i'm gonna go on like a bit of a story here but one of the examples uh like to pull from is um one of the first uh, awards events that we did at the theater when we, we made this new program was uh, the Mossy River Inn got nominated. Chico's there and had some people come up to me after the show and said, I didn't realize there's a restaurant in Winnipeg Osis. And it's like, okay, for the perfect example, mm-hmm. you know, just going 45 minutes mm-hmm. north to another community and, and having lunch or supper, like it's just that simple. And there's a really good opportunity out there. And then that goes for any community 
than the area. Well, you know, so then a distillery wins this year, right? So you've got a distillery now in Grandview, and you've yep. got a brewery coming up in Dauphin next. Yep. And that's some exciting stuff going on here. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Right? Yeah, lots, yeah. To, lots to be excited about and look forward to and, and lots happening and, and all different sectors, right? So mm-hmm. Yeah, and, uh, you know, what was the latest news? The daycare going up. So, yeah. you know, that's great. Oh. A huge daycare that they're going to help build in Dauphin. So awesome. more jobs, uh, you know, more of my employees can get childcare. That's a big struggle. Mm-hmm. It won't be a struggle in Dauphin. So no. And then if, yeah, if there's any, um, if that's a hinder for any other professionals coming in or any other industries or anything like yeah. that, then yeah, services are there to support them and their families. And, yeah, that's fantastic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Just want to wrap things up. Anything, final words, any final thoughts that, either one of you have that you wish to share like ultimately like this is why parkland you know like i think you've hit a lot of really great points along the way you want to just maybe summarize a bit of those or or anything else that we haven't covered um i i don't have a lot of final thoughts but i think um i mean thank you for for doing this i think one of the key things um kind of spinning off of the the awards night is just i think the longer something like that goes on and the more people that come out the more people recognize the different businesses that are there, like you said, Mossy River not even being known. Um, And I think more people will be um, inclined to realize that they can nominate a business, which in turn just starts to build the business awareness of what's out there. Um, So thank you to the chamber for doing events like this, because I think this is, this is a great opportunity for people like Barrett and I to kind of collaborate and talk, talk through some things. But um, I think also maybe one thing that I, get asked a lot is just, you know, how did you guys do this? Or how did you come up with the ideas? Or what did you tap into? Um, And so I think it's a complicated answer in many ways. But at the same time, when I think back to how many of the the pieces started, um, one being our cabin rentals, um, I'm going to give a little shout out to someone probably doesn't even know the impact that he had, but um, Mick Lott, uh, hopefully I pronounced that right, um, was a big player in, in kind of instilling that vision for for me of what the, the, the cabins could look like, um, from that perspective. And then, and then the hub, the hub in Dauphin, um, pr- primarily if you're a female entrepreneur, um, it is an, an incredible resource that is right in, again, right in our community that is helping so many businesses get off the ground and running and some that are really successful at this point and, you know, running into the stars. So, um, that's fun to see. And then I think just whatever industry you're in, and and Barrett may have something different to say about this, but whatever industry you're in is just connecting to whatever leaders may be within that industry or organization. So for us, that's things like the MLOA or Manitoba Wildlife Federation, um, Ducks Unlimited, the tourism industry, Travel Manitoba, connecting to those, it's Parkland Chamber, obviously, connecting to those organizations to see what's happening, how can they help you. Um, a lot of times these people are behind closed closed doors and they want to help businesses thrive and get off the ground. And, and it just takes that phone call or that email to say, hey, I have this bit of an idea. Do you know where I can start or do you know where I can go to get some help? So, um, yeah, I just think if you're if you're in the Parkland and you have an idea, um, it's a place to create an amazing business and, and have a family and stay around and and so don't ever crush those cool ideas. There's lots, lots of space for, for more awesome businesses to happen. Definitely. As a former board member of uh, Parkland Community Futures, I got to give them a shout out. Too, yeah, for uh, sure. Yep. You know, I can remember sitting on that board and seeing some of the business proposals that come in and, you know, a bank turned them down. And, and uh, but Community Futures provides that opportunity to maybe get some money and start up. There is some there is some really good ideas out there. People have ideas. And, uh, you know, just just because you're in a small town or, or, um, you know, you might think it might not work, but it, it can work out here and, uh, we're seeing that it does. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Well, thanks Melanie. Thanks Barrett for being a part Thank of this. You. And, uh, yeah, thanks to the team at Grove for recording all the action here today. And thanks for joining on a episode of story studio. Mm-hmm.